Hi, this is Mr. New, and welcome to Illustrator at East Career and Tech Academy. This is the first video in the installment, and this is the introduction to Illustrator and Workspaces. Let's go ahead and open up Illustrator. We go down to the dock at the bottom of the screen, click on AI for Adobe Illustrator. Adobe will open. Okay, and now basically what we have is we have the shell of Illustrator. We don't have any project working yet, but on the side we have the toolbar. At the very top we have the Illustrator toolbar which allows us to work with either file selections or edit selections or objects, type, select, effects, view, window, and also a help menu. On the right side we have all of our palettes. If I hover over any of these it will let me know what those palettes are. I don't like to wait. So what we're going to do is we're going to hover our mouse right on the edge, click and drag, and that will reveal the names of these items. So now at a glance I know exactly that that would be transparency, this is gradient, and so forth. Before we can really show off what some of these other tools do, let's go ahead and open up a new file. If I go to File, New, I now have a new document folder. Under New Document Profile, we're going to choose Print for now and we discussed this before, this is going to give us CMYK color mode and we're going to choose two artboards. I want my columns to be by row. We're going to keep the default of everything else, 20 points for spacing, letter size, go ahead and click OK. We now have two artboards in front of us. The artboard on the left is the active artboard and the reason we know that is because it has a dark line around it. If I click on the right artboard, it will have the dark line around it. So we're going to go ahead and start with the left artboard as our active. And now we're going to take a look at some of the tools we have. And I want to point out a few things with them. If you notice the very first tool, if I hover, it says it's the selection tool. Also notice that next to it there is a V that shows up in parenthesis. The V is a shortcut. If I'm in another tool, let's go ahead and pick the magic wand tool and I have the magic wand tool, if I hit the letter V, it automatically turns to my selection tool again. This is a lot quicker to be able to get back and forth to the selection tool. Get used to that shortcut. It's a lot easier than always clicking on this to be able to switch. Another thing I want to bring to your attention is in the lower right corner, if a tool has a little small triangle in it, that means if you click and hold your mouse button down, it will have a variety of other tools sharing that same little square. In this case, we have the pin tool, the add anchor point tool, delete anchor point tool, and the convert anchor point tool. Also, if you notice on the far right, we have what's called a tear off. If I click on this tear off, it now creates a separate tool palette of just those four tools. This comes in really handy when we're trying to create an illustration and we don't want to have to keep clicking up here in the side if we're working on something here in the middle of our screen. We're going to go into much more detail on how these tools work later on, but right now let me show you a couple of things with these. With the pin tool, for instance, the pin tool does not draw, but it allows you to plot anchor points at which time the computer will then calculate out the path between those anchor points. Here's an example. Notice that in my pin tool, there's a little X next to the pin. That means that I am now starting a new object. When I click, it creates an anchor point. And notice now that that little X has changed. The little minus sign is there. That means if I click again, it will delete that anchor point. So let's go ahead and recreate it. When I move my pin, notice also that there is no X, but it does give me a new coordinate and how many points away my pin is from my original anchor point. If I click again, it creates a new anchor point. What if I wanted a curved line? Let's bring the pin out one more time. I'm going to click, but I'm going to hold the mouse button down, and I'm going to drag. So click and drag will actually create a curved line. As I move my anchor point around, I can adjust the amount of curve or, or the less amount of curve or the angle of curve depending on where I leave this. So I'm going to go ahead and use about a curve about like that and let go. And now it has now created a curved path. If I go back to my original anchor point, notice there is now a circle 
When I move away, there's no circle. When I cover that anchor point, there's a circle. That means it is going to close that path. So if I click, it has now completed the object. It is now a complete closed object. I'm going to go ahead and hit the V, and now I have a selection tool. And this object has already been automatically selected. I want to click off the object first, because if you notice up at the top, we have anchor point convert. It's, it's thinking that I want to make conversions. I don't want to. I want to add some color. So I'm going to click off and then click back on. And now what happens is I have new options up here at the top. My first option is my fill color. The fill color is what falls inside of the path. So I'm going to go ahead and open that up and I'm going to pick a yellow. The next one is my path color. Right now the path is black. Let's go ahead and choose that again and make my path red. I don't want that thin of a path. I want my stroke to be a lot darker. So I'm going to select it again. And now I'm going to go to the stroke. The stroke is the actual line around the object. And the thickness of that stroke, or the weight of the stroke, I'm going to bump it up to a weight of eight points. So now I have a nice bold red line around it. With my object still selected, I can change the uniformity of the line. Right now it's uniform. I can actually do um, more of a contour shape. Let's go ahead and pick with profile two. Let's select it again. This time we're gonna go to the next area where we have a either basic shape or we can add like a chalk scribble. Let's go ahead and click on chalk scribble. And now it gives it more of an artistic flair to my object. If I zoom in, you're gonna notice that there is a light blue line inside of my chalk scribble. That blue line is still my original path that was created when I plotted my anchor points. So let's take a moment right now and look at some of the options we have for zoom. I can actually hit the command plus sign, or it's actually command equal, and zoom in on an object, and hit the minus, command minus, to zoom out. If I do a command plus and zoom in, I'm not centered, so I need to pull that artwork back over. So if I hold the space bar down, I now have a hand in the middle of my screen instead of my cursor. If I click the mouse, the hand grabs, and I can pull my artwork over and center it, and then I can go ahead and do a command plus again to get it closer still. If we only want to look at the one artboard, I can do a command zero, and it will give me a full frame of the active artboard. If I do a command option zero, it will give me all of my artboards. One of my favorite tools is to hold down the space bar and the command together. And now I have a magnifying glass with a plus. If I click and drag and just fill up that and let go, it will blow up full frame. If I do shift command option, I have a little negative sign and wherever I click, it will back out of that object centering on where my cursor was. So with that done, let's go ahead and move our palette over here and let's zoom in on this a little bit. I want to add a new anchor point right in the middle of the straight line. So I'm going to go ahead and select Add Anchor Point Tool, click in the middle, and I want this anchor point to be pulled out. So the way that works, I want to convert the anchor point, and when I click on the anchor point, I'm going to click and hold it down, and then I'm going to hit the space bar at the same time. So now I have the button click and the space bar, and when I move, I can actually pull that out. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and pull it in. Let's go ahead and bring it in about to there and let go. And instead of having a sharp edge, I want it to be curved. So I'm now going to use the same tool, click again. This time I'm going to drag. And I can move this around again and create a curved line with that. So let's go ahead and curve that out. I'm kind of done with this image. I'll let you play around with it more on your own time. So let me go ahead and close that out. Let me do a command zero to go back to the full frame. Hit a V to get my selection tool. And if you notice, when I hover over one of the corner boxes, I get a curved arrow. If I drag that curved arrow around, I can actually rotate this object. If I click on the path and drag, I can move the entire object. If I click on any of these boxes in the corners, I can shrink or make the object larger. I can distort it and do all sorts of odd configurations with this object by pulling and dragging. 
That's basically very basics of the pen tool. Show you a couple other tools really quick. Let's go ahead and click on the rectangle tool. Click and drag and let go. I now have a rectangle. If I hit V and then select that, I can change the color of that as well. Let's go with a light green on the fill. Let's go with a really dark green on the stroke. And let's bump that stroke up to about a nine. And now we can actually play with that one as well. I can change it after the fact. I can rotate it, move it around, and that's that particular tool. Last tool I'm going to show you right now, then I'll let you go ahead and play, and that is the brush tool. Click on the paintbrush tool, and if I just kind of draw any kind of a line out there, it is going to take whatever configuration I have up here and attribute to that line. So right now, I have that stroke of a dark green, and I have my brush definition. So I can go ahead and create different lines out there as well. Once you have played around with this a while, I want you to save your work. In fact, you should save often. So if you haven't saved by now, you should save now. We're going to go to File, and we're going to Save. And the first time you save, it's going to give you an option to save as the name that we gave it, which we will. We are going to save it to the desktop, and it's going to be an Adobe Illustrator file. So let's go ahead and hit Save. And we get this options menu up, we'll just hit OK. And now that file is on my desktop. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next episode.